G'day everyone, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Due to popular demand, I've cycled back to my team based videos and today I'll be discussing the Western Bulldogs and their prospects for the upcoming AFL season. As we all remember, the Bulldogs stunned football fans across the nation with their heroic 2016 Premiership win. The nature of that Premiership win was unprecedented. Never had a team won the flag from 7th place under the current top 8 system. Given the young talent on the dogs list at the time, I think I, like many perhaps, believe that that Premiership was a sign of things to come. However, the on-field response to winning the Premiership could only be described as disastrous, with the dogs slumping to 10th on the ladder in 2017 and 13th in 2018. They would become the first side since Adelaide in 2000 to miss finals in successive years following a Premiership. So the question is, what is to be made of this Premiership hangover? It's important to note that rather than being an ageing Premiership team on the slide, the Bulldogs remain one of the younger sides of the competition. In fact, they're getting progressively younger season to season. In 2017, the year after the flag, they had the 10th oldest list in the competition. Going into 2019, they have dropped to be the 13th oldest. On the flip side of that, however, the Dogs list comprised 20 Premiership players last year, more so than any club at the time other than Richmond. The Dogs certainly haven't had things go their way either since 2016. In addition to the retirements of star veterans Bob Murphy and Matthew Boyd, the Dogs have also lost important star power through the departures of Clay Smith and Jake Stringer. Tom Liberatore battled poor form in 2017 before missing 2018 due to a knee injury, and Liam Picken didn't play a game either. To compound their problems, star forward Luke Dowhouse has defected to the Cattery for the 2019 season. But rather than dwell on what hasn't gone right for the Dogs recently, let's look at what they have going for them. For a start, they are not short of star power. Marcus Bontempelli has the potential to become one of the best players in the competition, while Jack McRae announced himself as a top-line midfielder during 2018. A top midfield trio of Bont, McRae and Lockie Hunter stacks up competitively against most midfields in the competition. The incredible thing about this trio is that they are all younger than 25. Other key contributors to their 2016 Premiership wins such as Jason Johannesson, Caleb Daniel and Tom Boyd are all under the age of 26. Theoretically, these players should all have their best football ahead of them, which set the Bulldogs apart from other Premiership sides that have fallen down the ladder due to age. This speaks to the possibility that the Dogs have another Premiership window ahead of them, rather than having bypassed it. The Bulldogs ranked second in the competition last year for clearances, suggesting that the midfield is actually a strong point. What is evident is that while the Dogs have a strong top three in terms of their midfield, those players need more support. The first player to come to mind to help ease this issue would be Tom Liberatore. At his best, we know that Liberatore can be a prodigious clearance winner. For a variety of reasons, Liber hasn't been able to recapture his form of 2013 and 14, in which he averaged nearly 8 clearances a game. However, he returns to the side from his ACL as a 27-year-old experienced midfielder and has a potentially important role to play in that young midfield. Josh Dunkley also emerged in 2018 as a high-production midfielder. In Dunkley's last nine games of 2018, he averaged an impressive 28 possessions a game and was particularly influential in the Dogs' three-game streak towards the end of the year. At just 22 years old, he's another example of how the Bulldogs' talent seems to be concentrated in their youth. Toby McLean is a player who has emerged as a bit of a gun over the past two years. His talent is probably a bit underrated by those who don't follow the Bulldogs, but McLean was ranked 14th in the league for tackles last year and averaged 24 disposals. A creative small forward slash midfielder, McLean is likely to become increasingly important to the Dogs in the absence of Dalhouse. Caleb Daniel is another talented small outside player. On his day, Daniel is an incredibly damaging and incisive midfielder with elite decision making under pressure. His form was patchy during the middle of 2018 before he came strong at the end, suggesting that he's the sort of player that plays his best footy when the Dogs are up and about. One area of concern on the Bulldogs list is their scoring power, or lack thereof. Medium forward Billy Gowers was upgraded from the rookie list to be the club's leading goalscorer with 26 majors last year. Former Lion Josh Shackey showed glimpses of promise with 17 goals from 13 games, although it appears the Dogs are relying heavily on his development as a key forward. Tom Boyd has battled with the expectation that comes with being a number one draft pick, as well as having a million dollar contract. I actually think that Boyd has the talent to excel at AFL level, but would benefit from less of a microscope being placed upon him. In any case, 
His increased time in the ruck saw him average just half a goal a game in 2018. It is well documented that Marcus Bontempelli spent periods as a deep forward in 2018. It's always a dilemma having an elite player who is damaging both in the middle and with his back to goals. It's also hard to assess the effectiveness of this move when Bont was spending large periods of the game deep and the Dogs were losing more games than they were winning. Personally, I think you should have your best midfielders in the middle, but it is clear the Dogs need to add more goal scoring options to their list. As a final point, I actually think the Bulldogs may have some of the best recruiters in the league. Their drafting from 2012 and onward in particular was on point and played a big part in their flag win. In my eyes, their 2017 draft performance could be huge in the context of their next premiership drive. Aaron Norton has established himself as one of the best key back prospects in the league, finishing fourth in the Bulldogs' best and fairest in just his first season. I think he was a bargain even at pick nine, and in five years or so, he will be talked about as one of the best defenders in the game. Seven picks later, the Dogs also picked up the classy Ed Richards who is one of the best performed players from his draft class to date. Having taken the talented ruck Tim English in 2016 and dynamic midfielder Bailey Smith in 2018, the young talent on the Bulldogs list is really starting to round out. Now with respect to the 2019 season, I'm not expecting the Bulldogs to make any great strides. With the abundance of young talent on their list, the Dogs will likely be aggressively getting games into some of the guys mentioned above. While I certainly think the list has the talent to push for finals this year, equally, I could see them finishing close to the bottom four again due to the lack of experience and scoring power on their list. However, I do genuinely rate the talent on their list and can see shades of the Hawthorne 2008 Premiership side that fell down the ladder after an unexpected flag. They may not have a Buddy Franklin on the list, but with excellent recruiters and a good coach in Luke Beveridge, this list has the talent to do it all again someday. I predict that the Bulldogs will win another Premiership within five years. But what do you guys think? As always, I invite your opinions in the comments and look forward to the discussion. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Bye for now.